Awesome. Thank you so much and welcome everyone. We're really excited to have this time together to really take you through the opportunity of franchising with PropertyGuys.com. So really appreciate your time. Um, hopefully you're interested in joining the future of real estate. That's why we're all here. And uh, by the end of this, hopefully we've answered all of your questions. And if not, we'll have lots of time to connect after today's spotlight session. So allow me to introduce myself. My name's Ashley. I'm the marketing communications manager for PropertyGuys.com. Um, it's a super fun job. We have a lot of fun here at Property Guys. Um, it's the best job ever because we get to not only help our hundred plus franchisees across North America and beyond, um, but we also get to meet with new potential entrepreneurs and business owners every single day who are interested in taking control of their life and uh, making a change that's going to be really exciting for them. So um, I'm going to allow everyone else to introduce themselves. Let's start with you, Jason. Hi there. Hi, everybody. I'm Jason Capson. Uh, I've been with uh, PropertyGuys.com off and on, I guess, for about eight years now. I was in business development, uh, head coach, and now in franchise development. Uh, so I've seen uh, all sides of the business and, and where PropertyGuys.com is heading where they were when I started versus where we are now and where we're heading into the future. I'm very, very excited. And, and to be quite honest with you, I'm, I'm excited for anybody that comes on board right now as a franchisee. It is the absolute best time to join PropertyGuys.com. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Uh, Paige, why don't you go next? All right. Hi, guys. I'm Paige Herndon. Um, I came on to Property Guys home office team about two years ago, but really I've kind of grown up in this business. My mother, Dana, you'll talk to her in a minute. Uh, she used to own a franchise and I went from being our local sign girl to helping at trade shows to now helping sell franchises across the country. I couldn't be happier to be a part of this team. It's truly exciting and a great adventure for everybody. Awesome. Thanks, Paige. And Dana. Hi, everyone. Welcome and thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm Dana Herndon. I'm the Director of Franchise Development for PropertyGuys.com. Uh, my journey with the company started quite a while ago, actually. Um, I've been with Property Guys since 2008 as a franchisee, but prior to that, I was actually a customer. So I was a property investor and a house flipper, and I was looking for solutions to sell my properties and save money. So that was my introduction to it. Um, just like they say, I liked the company so much, I bought myself a franchise, uh, <laughs> and I worked that for about six years. Um, I was one of the top performers in Canada, and uh, I actually sold my franchise to a team of mortgage brokers. It wasn't even for sale, but um, yeah, I loved what I did, but I kind of was given an offer that I couldn't refuse. And around that time, uh, Property Guys headquarters was deciding to venture into the United States and beyond. Uh, they were looking for someone that could kind of explain this opportunity from the ground up. And uh, it seemed to be a perfect fit. And none of us have looked back ever since. So looking forward to spreading this across the world, actually. So we thought it would be really cool in preparing for this to be able to share with you guys our frequently asked questions and be able to answer those live for you. So we're gonna kick things off. Uh, Jason, do I need a real estate license to become a franchisee with PropertyGuys.com? That is a great question, Ashley. And yes, we do get asked this uh, quite a bit. And uh, the answer is no. You do not need a real estate license to become a franchisee with PropertyGuys.com. Having said that, we do now have the opportunity for our franchisees to either become licensed. A lot of our franchisees are currently working with licensed agents. And we also have licensed agents coming into the system to purchase the franchise at this point because we now have a brokerage under our umbrella. Awesome, good to know. So whether I have one or I don't, I can join. We're, we're for you regardless. <laughs> okay. okay, easy first question. So how much does a franchise cost and how much do I need to invest? Paige, why don't you take this one? Yeah, for sure. So most of our franchises cost anywhere between about 30 and $50,000. 
Um, and then on top of that, the money that you'll need to invest would be anywhere between about fifteen and twenty-five thousand dollars for your startup costs. So that's going to cover everything that you'll need to get the business going and off the ground. And we're here to help every single step of the way. It's a super affordable franchise, and we really love to get people on board with this. Awesome. Um, I know we often talk about it being home-based business. Um, one of the reasons we're able to kind of have such a great price tag on our locations. Um, is there anything else, Paige, that allows us to kind of keep those costs of down? Course, of course. So we don't have a whole lot of overhead. It is a home-based business. We love to make the joke and say that your um, wrapped vehicle is going to be your office. Um, it's like your traveling billboard, traveling office. It's your everything. Um, so we have very low overhead. This can be a single owner operator. We have tons of franchisees that are power couples and business partners. It's really great for anybody. Awesome. Thanks. All right. So we'll stay with you on this one page. How big is a typical franchise territory? Yeah. So each territory is an exclusive territory. Um, so each one is typically dependent on dwelling count, but most of them are between 40 and 60,000 dwellings, which is very, um, very good for people that are a single owner operator and doing this on their own. It's also great for those power couples that I had talked about. It's still a good size for them as well. So they are exclusive territories, like I said, and most of them are between that 40 and 60,000 dwelling mark. Awesome. Sounds like a lot of opportunity, a lot of houses. <laughs> exactly. And those are just going to keep buying and selling in that territory. So you're never going to run out of opportunity. Awesome. Yeah. You mentioned exclusive territory. That's something our franchisees really love. Um, it makes them one of one in their market instead of, you know, having to kind of fight for leads as often happens with your traditional exactly. agent. Exactly. Fabulous. So how does a franchisee make money, um, especially if they're not charging a commission? Dana, what do you think? This one, uh, it's, a, it's a top of the list for the frequently asked questions most often. Uh, people do understand when they're, they're inquiring on a propertyguys.com franchise that we're not um, the traditional agent model. They know we do real estate, but they know we do it differently. And that's the biggest thing. If I'm not earning commission upon the sale, how do I make money? And the, the answer is um, you make your money up front the day you actually do the listing. So what we're selling to the consumer is um, a package, a listing and marketing package for them to get from the beginning to the end of the journey until the sold sign is on their lawn for one flat fee. So the reason why consumers are, are, are loving this product is it doesn't matter if their home is selling for $200,000 or $800,000. It doesn't matter the size of their home and it doesn't matter how quickly it sells, if it sells in two days or two months or two years. What the consumer is buying from us is the, the listing package. Normally they purchase a product we sell called the Real Estate Pro that includes absolutely everything to get them um, that that's old sign on the lawn and they're doing it for a flat fee. A lot of people ask, you know, what, what does this sell for? And traditionally it's about 10 times less than using an agent. So often our home sellers are paying between three and $5,000 on average in Canada um, for that package. Awesome. Um, I think another kind of top question, probably the one that follows this one in your guys's calls that you have every day is how do franchisees get leads? So how do we get people um, at that top of the funnel in order to get to those listing packages? Um, we'll stay with you on this one, Dana. Yeah, so the leads kind of come in two different ways. Obviously, there's leads um, just if there's a propertyguys.com franchise location open, um, it's on the website, people are seeing the signs on lawns, um, you know, the leads are coming in through the site or they're calling our 1-800 number to home office. And we're, as Paige mentioned, you have an exclusive territory, you're not fighting for that lead, that one's going to come to you automatically. I like to call those ones the, the cherry on top. Like they're, they're the easy ones. They're coming to you. Obviously, if you own any business, it doesn't matter what it is. You're, you're trying to make sure that the consumers in your marketplace know about you and who you are. And that's where our marketing campaigns um, come in. So we have a lot of marketing materials available for the franchisees. We kind of take over um, kind of nationally and they are, are responsible 
for promoting themselves locally. We all know that real estate is hyper local. And when people look to list their house, they want someone from their community that they know, like, and trust. Um, and there's only one property guys person. So, um, you know, people join the chamber, people drive the wrap vehicle, people put out the marketing campaigns, and that obviously snowballs and, and generates leads along with the generic ones. Yeah, I think that's really important too, that distinction between um, kind of locally generated leads and local advertising and marketing tactics, um, as well as the national. So the, the leads that come in through the website and ones that are kind of um, organic and things that are coming in based on that national brand awareness. But a lot of it is coming down to that franchise territory and having visibility and building inventory, um, as you mentioned. Is there anything that kind of helps franchisees once they get the leads into the system? Yeah, so the resource center, I always say they're worth their weight in gold. Um, we have a team of people that work at home office behind the scenes. They're open 8 a.m. until midnight, um, taking calls on behalf of the franchisees. So um, their job is kind of twofold. They have in, inbound and outbound uh, sales. So basically, once a franchisee gets a property up and listed, the phone number that goes on the sign and all of the marketing materials is our phone number at at home office at the contact center so the person selling the house doesn't have to take that call and stumble through it and and neither does the franchisee um, it's great because we have a lot of people that inquire um, either online or by phone from anywhere in the country in different time zones and different times of day um, so the call center is always there to pick up and take those calls and answer questions on the property what they're doing actually there which helps with our lead gen is they're also finding out are those people pre-approved for a mortgage we can help with that as well um, do you have a house to sell I see you're interested in buying a house you must have a house to sell that lead would automatically go to our our franchisee we could even set up an appointment for them and send them some information um, so the call center works great that way so uh, Jason what does training look like at propertyguys.com uh, that's a great question we get that one all the time as well uh, training is ongoing what, what's great about training with propertyguys.com is it never stops it starts really once you once you sign the contract and you become a franchisee it starts with an orientation and the orientation what we call pgu property guys university is really sort of an overview we used to do it in-house unfortunately these days uh, we're doing it virtual and we have a three-day virtual orientation which I think is really, really well done. And I think it's very powerful considering the limited time and, and, and how we have to do it via Zoom. But I think with technology, we're able to do it very, very effectively so that anyone that's coming into the system, A, they understand who at home office is sort of in charge or who to, you know, is going to be taking care of certain aspects of the business. And we introduce everyone, we go through basically a high level view of everything that goes on at propertyguys.com. You quickly realize and find out that for the most part, I would say 90% of the folks at home office, the job there is to help the franchisee become more successful. And I'm really proud of that. I'm proud of being a part of that team as well, um, because it really is a team effort and everyone's job there, and we take it very seriously, is to help the franchisee be successful because we know that without the franchisee, we're nothing, we don't exist. So we really put a lot of effort into that. The training from after PGU, after the orientation, you have what we call a launch coach that sort of takes over and walks you through kind of a step-by-step -step checklist of how to get your business going from the day you leave for about the first 90 days or so. We also set you up with a mentor, which is somebody that's in our system that has been successful, that knows their stuff, is in the trenches with you, and we set you up with them, and we try to find somebody that's close to your territory, similar kind of territories. We match you at home office so that you've got somebody that you can kind of lean on on top of everybody from, from home office. You have a mentor that really is, is sort of, it, it's that person that you can lean on when you've got questions about the day-to-day -day operations. You can text them, you can email them, you can call them. And we've got such an incredible 
team of franchisees. And what's amazing, we, we talked about this earlier, I'm a former real estate, traditional real estate agent. And the one thing that I didn't have was that kind of support from a mentor. And I think that that is one of the most valuable things that we offer because like you mentioned, the territory is protected. You don't have to worry about somebody else coming in and stealing your stuff. You're, you're learning, you have a mentor that wants you to succeed because your success is their success. So the training really is, like I say, it's ongoing, it's ever evolving. We've got courses, we've got an ops department that takes care of, um, you know, back in called the hub. And we've got all kinds of resources there from training and sales courses. And, and uh, again, it's just ongoing for what seems to be forever and ever and ever, which is good. You can never stop learning. Hey, yep, I, I agree. Cheers to that. So the sister of training is, of course, support. So how much support can a new franchisee expect to receive, Jay? So again, this is one of those things that's really, you know, near and dear to me because uh, having been the head coach for the last year or so at uh, propertyguys.com, to me, the, the level of support and what's interesting, Ken always talks about, there isn't a support division in our company. Everyone is support. And what's what I love most is, yes, at home office, they're, they're everybody. I hear it all the time when I'm walking through the office. I hear coaching going on from all, all different offices in, in every wall and every corner of the building. It's not just the coaching department or the support department. It goes, it goes from front to back, top to bottom. And even our own franchisees, I find the level of support that our own franchisees give other franchisees, it kind of happens organically in the field. And it's absolutely amazing. In fact, we've got classes that have left PGU from their orientation that still two and three years later meet every two weeks virtually now and discuss and brainstorm and grow and help each other to develop. So the support, honestly, I think is second to none. It starts from the second you sign your contract and it goes on indefinitely. And I think that's really, really important. You're never left alone. It is there. The support is there. We're all just a call away. And, and it's something I'm very, very proud of. Awesome. So this is a question that actually came up in our last um, CFA virtual event. Um, so obviously top of mind for everyone right now, starting a business during a pandemic is scary, terrifying, nerve wracking, insert adjective here. Uh, what makes this business in particular a viable option, Dana? Um, I think when COVID first hit here in Canada, everybody was in shock and everyone was scrambling, especially business people. What are we going to do? Um, we weren't. Actually, we had the opposite effect. We have been leveraging technology for years. We have been ahead of the curve in real estate for years. So with regard to us versus the traditional model, they were at a standstill. You know, they... The, the traditional agents, you know, they had their face on their sign, they promoted themselves, they were like, you need me for this transaction, it can't happen without me, I'm the guy that does everything, I'm the middleman, I'm the back and forth, I'm in your face, I'm in your house. What we do is quite different, we were already using technology and taking a lot of that out of the mix. So a lot of our sales presentations were done virtually. Um, we do virtual tours. Um, we already um, had a lot of these things in, in place to help our consumers, like even closing. So, you know, we were, um, you know, closing virtually. You weren't sitting down at the law firm um, doing your closing. Um, your Our appraisals are desktop appraisals, so you didn't have to have the appraiser come into your home. So we were very much ahead of the curve um, and poised very well um, to do business in the pandemic. And as I said, quite the opposite happened for us. Our call volume went up. Um, first of all, the real estate market just after the first few months of COVID exploded um, because everybody sat tight and nobody listed their house. And then when they finally did, they started selling overnight and real estate became very, very hot. And people started to learn quickly that you could do this a different way. People were selling their homes online, which is what we've been talking about for 23 years. Um, so uh, we were poised very well to be a go-to business in the pandemic. We know that there's a lot of other franchises and types of business that are face-to-face -face and in-person and, and, you know, the rules and restrictions, you know, really hurt them. 
for us, we can't think of any better time. The real estate is, is hot and going to be hot for a while. Um, and, and we have the technology um, to work with it. Um, on, a, on another note, really business wise, um, what we found is a lot of people, a lot of consumers are using propertyguys.com because the homes right now are selling very quickly. Days on market are low. Um, if all you have to do is get up and list it and you're probably gonna sell your house and sell it over asking or have a bidding war. So nobody wants to pay the real estate agent 30, 40, $60,000 when it's gonna get posted and sell in three days. Um, that makes our product much more appealing. On the flip side of that, people say to me often, well, what happens in a downturn or what happens during a recession? Um, you know, we've been touted already for years as one of the recession proof businesses to be in. And here's the reason why when things are tight, and the market, you know, days on market are long and there's not a lot of margins to be had and everybody's trying to sell their house. Um, we, we become the business of choice again because they can list with us for three to five thousand dollars, price their house lower than all of their neighbors with similar homes in the neighborhood, sell quicker because they're priced less and still walk away with the same amount in their back pocket and sell faster than their neighbor. Um, this is a popular question kind of right off the bat that we're always able to address. Um, Paige, how many locations do we have? So currently in Canada, we do have just under a hundred locations, but just over a hundred franchisees. That would be due to our power couples and our business partners and our teams. We absolutely love them. Um, but yeah, just under a hundred locations, we are striving to get that up over that number. Um, we are expanding every single week. You'll see our releases in our uh, CC News release, um, constantly putting up new franchises. Uh, you'll see a couple more coming out, hopefully in the next few weeks here. We've got some deals going through. We've got some PGU classes already in the works here now. So we really are moving forward and expanding. Um, like we said earlier, internationally as well. So we are in the States. We are in South Africa. We, um, we're moving, we're moving, moving, moving. So get ready and get your seat because these are exclusive locations. Right. Last question here um, from our top 10 FAQs. How long is a franchise term? And what happens if I'm a franchisee and eventually want to sell my location, Dana? Where do you take this one since you did this? <laughs> yeah, I've done this. Um, so the franchise terms are for five years with the option to renew for further five-year terms and you can negotiate after that. Um, what happens, you know, a lot of people think, oh, five years isn't that long. And some people think, oh, five years seems like the end of the world. So um, you own your franchise territory. It's yours. So you should, if, if, if you have to move, obviously you can't take it with you. Um, or if, um, if uh, somebody became ill or whatever, and you purchased a franchise, you're not stuck with it. It's yours. You own it. You can put it up for sale locally. You should always be able to get back at least what we sold it to you for. So each territory size is kind of based on dwelling count. As Paige said earlier, they're normally between 30 and $60,000. That's because they're between 30 and 60,000 dwellings. So you'll do the quick math and figure out we sell our locations for roughly a dollar per dwelling what we're selling you is the license to operate in that territory so even if you didn't grow your business or gain any market share and you stayed in it for a year or so you should be able to put that up for sale um, and sell it we would have to approve your buyer uh, we don't want any bad apples in the system uh, so uh, we would approve your buyer just the same way we approve you coming in uh, and then you're you're off to the races Awesome. Um, so we have a few questions here, guys, from um, our attendees, which is really great to see this engagement. Um, the one that just came in is on this topic. So we'll, we'll do this one first. Um, they asked, do I pay fees every five years to renew? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, there is a renewal fee, so you don't rebuy your franchise. If you bought your franchise territory for say $30,000, that's that's a one-time fee. Your renewal fee is 7,500. So you would pay the renewal fee that was in your agreement at the beginning of the term. 
So thank you guys so much for coming on today. Um, and Jason and Paige and Dana for your insight into the franchise opportunity with propertyguys.com. We really appreciate your time and we hope to uh, connect with you one-on-one -on -one very soon.